Hey there, this is Rebecca. Today we're going to cover the three states of matter. The three states are namely solid, liquid, and gas. We're going to deep dive into the microscopic view of what that really means. We're going to look at an, an example, and using that example, we're going to try to understand the motion, the attractive force, the volume, and the density differences with each one of these three states. So let's get started. The first state of matter is known as a solid. An example of a solid would be ice. The next state of matter is known as liquid. An example for a liquid state would be water. The final state of matter is the gaseous state, and an example of a gas would be steam. So here is an example where we're just purely looking at the states of matter with water as an example. So, um, if you have drinking water, distilled water, and you put that into the freezer to make ice cubes, that water has changed from liquid form to a solid form. When you decide that you would like some hot water, you would like to make some tea or some coffee, then that water, when you're boiling it, bits of it are then converted into steam, as seen in the white steamy pieces. Um, that you see with the person pouring tea into the different teacups. So all of these are examples of the states of matter that could occur with simply water. The first microscopic view is looking at a solid. And in a solid, the particles are packed closer together. So there's very, very little motion. Compared to water, um, you know, water is a lot more loosely packed when we compare that with ice. So there's a lot more motion. Um, it's a lot more loosely packed, right? We have water that's a lot more flowing and ice cubes that's kind of just confined to whatever container that you put it in. In steam, particles have a lot of space in between. So there's a lot of motion. The attractive forces in ice is really strong and it kind of goes down from there. So in liquid state, it's medium and in gaseous state, the attractive forces are rather weak. In a solid state, particles are held tightly together in a small space. So compared to that, in a liquid form, the particles are loosely flowing the volume of the mug and when we're looking at the gas, the particles are dispersed and has the space of the room for whatever motion. Um, solid, liquid, and gas, looking at that density, uh, just by looking at the microscopic view and what we've learned so far, evidently the most dense, densely packed particles would be found in solid state, followed by liquid and gas. So what does it mean when particles are held tightly together in a small space? So the ice cubes are confined to the cubes of the container. So if you happen to have an ice cube container that could make star-shaped ice, then your ice is gonna come out star-shaped, right? It's not gonna come out uh, round and it's not gonna come out square. So the particles are held together in that small space and confined to that. In a liquid state, water is a lot more flowing. We know that the attractive forces uh, happen to be not as strong so that means that the particles are not as tightly packed together. This means that it will just, again, be confined to whatever container it's given. So if you pour water into a cup, um, the water will take the shape of the cup. If you pour water into a flat pan, that's a square pan, then it's gonna take up the square pan space. And a gas, what it means when it says it takes up the space of the room is because for example, when you're heating, when you're trying to boil hot water and you see a little bit of steam that comes out near the end um, that forms gas, which shows you that the water has just transitioned from a liquid state to a gaseous state into steam. The steam now has the entire space of whatever room you're boiling your water in. So if it happens to be in the kitchen, then that steam is going to, the steam particles are going to have all of the space of 
the kitchen room to play around as their playground. In solid state, the motion is known as vibration. Liquids, however, rotate and gas translates. So these are the three different types of motion associated with each one of these three states. If you have found this, this video helpful um, in discerning between solid, liquid, and gas, please, it would mean the world to me if you can like or subscribe. Thank you.